Came from Traverse City, went to Traverse City St. Francis. Sophomore year, my high school coach, Greg Vaughn, told me I have a chance to play some serious college football if I invest my time wisely. So, you know, I started to focus a lot on football and, you know, living in the weight room, got to get bigger. My whole goal growing up was to play in the MLB, honestly. Loved baseball, I was hitting home runs at a young age. I'm like, oh, you know, like, I could do this. I can go play baseball. But, you know, I started to get some size to me sophomore year and football started to look like the more realistic option. My high school coach helped me so much with recruiting and getting my name out there. Hi, my name is Matt Sober. I play tight end and middle linebacker. It's hard to do from a small school up north in Division 7. You got to you know, work a little extra harder to get your name out there. I went to camps, you know, I traveled me and my dad. We went to Iowa, Missouri, Michigan State, Syracuse. Big road trip, you know, flying all around, driving all around, doing everything we can to try and get a scholarship. First offer came, and it was ecstatic. You know, my family and I crying in the car on the way home from a high school baseball game. That was so fun, I'll never forget that. My high school coach and I were thinking, you know, they're gonna start coming now, you know? And then hopefully the bigger ones come and stuff. And that summer that didn't come, you know, a lot of the schools were telling me they're gonna watch me senior season and stuff. And so I'm like, okay, I'll prove it to them senior season. Unfortunately, that summer, I uh, went down with a broken navicular bone in my foot. It's an injury that doesn't heal very fast, so I was out for the entire senior season. Breaking his foot was super devastating to him. A ton of schools that told him they were just going to watch his senior year, like, you're close, we just need more film on you. So I think he was just really bummed out that he wasn't going to get the opportunity to go out there and show him what he could do. So all the recruiting process pretty much ended for me. I committed to Buffalo. I went to Buffalo. I loved it. Loved it there more than anything. I loved my class I was with. But that goal of going to play in Big Ten football, that dream, it was eating at me every night. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had to make a decision and take a huge risk. I knew what the risk was to leave the scholarship behind and come walk on here. We started talking about really what his options were. And obviously, Michigan State was kind of the forefront. We had some connections there already. He had been recruited. Just knowing my brother so well, I pretty much told him, you know, take the chance. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, whether you play it down at a school like Michigan State or not, you know, it's gonna be an experience of a lifetime. My brother Dylan, big sports guy too, and he's just been always someone that I've always been so close with since I was growing up. When things weren't going well, he's like, don't worry, it'll be fine. Like, it'll be fine, just, it'll work out. He always so cool, calm and collected about it. And so it just helped instill more confidence in me and not to stress so much. I went to Wichita State as a walk-on for baseball, got cut, didn't make it. So I'd been through that process of being a walk-on. And I told them it's probably, it's not gonna be easy to see the field. I mean, you're not a scholarship guy. Coaches are gonna have the guys they've recruited at this point. You know, it's gonna be a process, but if you trust the process and just keep working hard, you know, eventually you know, it could pay off for you. You might not ever see the field, but you know, you're gonna enjoy yourself there for sure. When I got here, just a walk-on, you know, and, and I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew what I could do, but I knew it wasn't gonna be easy. You have very tough days. You have days where you doubt yourself, wondering if, should I have made that decision? Was it worth it to come here? And it was tough because I did have the days where I doubted myself, but I never had the days where I told myself I'm gonna quit, because you can't quit, you never can quit. I was a guy who liked to hit people, like physicality, and Coach D recognized that. You know, we had a conversation and said, just try it at DN, see what happens. Didn't end up getting on the field or anything, but the amount of knowledge I gained on that defensive side of the ball was immense. It helped me so much because I started to learn fronts. I started to learn, you know, coverages that you can pre-recognize before the snap, a lot of stuff like that. So when I get back to the offensive side of the ball, I can recognize the stuff way better than I would before I moved to defensive end. And so I, I did, I learned so much and it was honestly a blessing in disguise. You know, some people looked at it as a waste of a year for me, and that's not how I look at it at all. I, I grew a lot. And at the end of the day, you got to count your blessings. You have to realize that you're at a place way bigger than yourself. It's more than just about you. And to be a part of something this special at a university like this is just a blessing in itself. <laughs> Coming into the tight end room, we had limited experience as far as guys who had played on Saturdays. So everything is wide open, and that's the way we've always done it. And working for Coach D'Antonio, the best guys play. 
and limited reps leads to an enormous amount of opportunities. And as you've seen, Cybert's taken advantage of that. Coach Staten is my tight end coach. Never had him as a coach until this year. I love that guy so much. I mean, no one's believed in me as much as he's believed in me. He installed the amount of confidence in me that it helped so much. And I'm just so thankful that he's my tight end coach. He's been very, very consistent, not only in his route running, but his blocking, his ability to catch the football, and his just desire to be as good as he can be. The coaches are gonna play the best players. They have a job to do, and that's to win. And so the opportunity is always there. This is just the best football I've been playing, and he's helped me in the mental aspect tremendously. So I think the opportunity has always been there. It's just this is the year that I've stepped up and I earned it. I think the most encouraging thing about Seibert is the path he took. And it's shown itself here again and again and again is that hard work pays off. He is old school, bloody knuckled, go after it. And there's a relationship that is easily developed with those type of guys because they're easy to follow. And I think that's the next step in his development as we get into the second half of the season is, okay, now start pulling some guys with you. Let them know that they can be as tough as you are. I want to be an inspiration of the other guys, you know, younger guys that are coming up and doing the same type of thing. Don't be afraid to take that risk. As long as you really, like, truly believe in yourself that you're going to make it happen, then it's going to happen. Bert is a very confident player, and he's never moved from that. He's always gone forward with, I'm going to be the best player out there. When you care so much that you put so much into it, I don't think outside, spectator-wise, you see it and go, oh, who's this? This is a surprise. But it's stuff that we've seen boiling and kind of starting to cook. And you know now Spartan Nation gets to see what's starting to become a finished product. You can do what you want. It's just how much time you're willing to put in, you know, how serious are you about it. You're gonna make it happen if you want it bad enough. I'm just glad that I can show other people that you know when it's not looking too good, when it's not looking like it's gonna work out, even towards the end of it, you know, just don't quit because you never know what the heck is gonna happen. Now back to Brian Lewerke, a little play fake, goal line there pass. You go. It's caught by Matt Seibert. Touchdown, MSU. First touchdown career-wise for Matt Seibert came at a big time for the Spartans here in the Big Ten opener. I never played in this many snaps in football games until this year. So every game I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm getting more comfortable. And so it's definitely an improvement every week. And I'm nowhere near close to where I, my potential is going to be. And so, you know, every week you got to get better and better. That's amazing to see him live his dream. I mean, it's just something he's always really wanted to do. We just dream as kids, you know, playing backyard football, getting to score a touchdown in some of those moments. Indiana game, and he scores a huge touchdown in the fourth quarter. I think that was his favorite moment of the season so far, honestly. You know, tight game. First Big Ten game at home. The chance that he gets to keep playing football at that high of a level is really just amazing. Yeah, it was just a truly a surreal moment. Touchdown, MSU! Another score for Matt Seibert. What makes him unique, he's just as excited when Dotson does something great or when Gillison does something great. And that's the true meaning of a, a teammate. I'm a big energy guy, man. You got to bring energy. Before I was playing, we were on the sidelines. I'd make sure that I'm doing everything I can to bring energy to the sidelines, dancing, all that, you know, singing, dancing in the music, you know, when the team starts going crazy and stuff, that's times I'll never forget here. So energy is a huge thing for me. You got to play the game with passion and emotion. If you don't, I don't know why you're out there. It, you only get to do it for a certain amount of time. I just like to have fun with it. He's just a guy that gets excited. Somebody scores a touchdown, he's, woo, if he's on the sideline, if he's in there with them, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And that is contagious. And Coach D'Antonio is always looking for that guy who can provide that spark. And thankfully, Seibert has. I want to keep doing everything I can to help impact us winning games. And so if that means scoring touchdowns in the red zone and being efficient in the red zone, then yeah, I'm, I'll take pride in that and uh, keep looking to be consistent because I want to win more than anything.